and welcome. I am Renee Stryverson, the host of VQ, which stands for Veterans Voices and Vibes, which is an outreach to the students and the um, community to bring the voices of the veterans out. So here is a, on our panel today, we have the Dean of Students, Corey Williams, our Veterans Work Study student, Alyssa Amesqua, Paige Fisher, our Veterans Education Specialist, and Kevin Smith, the Director of our Veterans Military Center. So welcome to uh, VQ. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So I have a few questions for you all today, and feel free to just chime in whenever you're ready. The first one is, why exactly do we need a Veterans and Military Center here on Governor State campus? Our veteran students need that sense of community, right, which is really, really important. Many of our veteran students are non-traditional students, right? So they need to connect with individuals that have experiences similar to them, that can share those experiences with them, that a non-veteran student wouldn't understand. So building that sense of community, building that sense of support, having someone that um, looks like them or has experienced what they've gone through that can offer them sound advice is crucial. I agree. Alyssa, as a student, how do you feel about that? As a student, I think that the VMC is essential to the success of our student veterans. Um, it really is a safe place for me to go to talk to other veterans who, like Dean Williams said, um, have shared experiences, and even if they're from a different branch, we all went through the same thing. So it's a good place, a safe space to, I guess, involve that interaction. Okay. Um, Alyssa, I have a question for you, I, it, for the whole panel, but I'd like for you to start. Um, what do you think that freshmen and transfer students need to know coming in as far as connecting with the Veterans um, and Military Center? What I think students need to know is that all the fears you're feeling, the transition, we're feeling it too. You're not alone. We've all hit different spots in our transition, whether we've just gotten out of the military or we've been out for a couple of years and we're still trying to get on our feet. There are others like you and we're here to help you. And we're here. I think that's the number one thing. They don't realize where we are, especially since we're not on the main campus, which is, I feel, a good thing. We have our own separate space for veterans to come and study and um, that's the main thing. We are here, we're in the GM Key building to answer any questions they may have especially right after they apply, because it can be very overwhelming with all of their steps that they need to go through. So we're here. I, I would like to elaborate on that just a bit uh, and ask you, Kevin, what's the importance of us having our own space our s and separate from the main building? Um, great question, and, and as I think about that, I think about all, all the students I've seen come through the center um, over the last six or seven years now. As for many of them, it's a, it's like that transition point, because remember, as Dean Williams said, our students are, our student veterans are non-traditional, okay? A lot of them are, are working while they're going to school full-time. They've got a family. We even have, um, uh, we have some members where their spouse and the member are attending here while they still have kids and they've got daycare. So we've been challenged in the past. Why do you have a separate space? Why aren't you on the main campus? Well. First of all, we couldn't acquire a space as nice as we have on the main campus during that time. But for our current students, if they need that respite, if you will, like they need a place to come in and say, I just need to like get ready for my transition. I've been working all day at you know, Amazon or wherever, and now I got class starting in 90 minutes and I haven't finished my assignment yet. They've got a place that they can do that. And if they're struggling, or they need something, there's usually somebody else right there. Like there's another student there. We've even had student veterans come bring their class, uh, like their study group together, and we'll have four or five in the center, and only one's a veteran, right? But the other four are in there, and then they're all working together, and it's teamwork, and it's a beautiful thing to see. So having that space available 
you know, again, like a safety net, whether you need it or not, it's still there and it's available. And just knowing that, I think, makes a difference for a lot of our students. That's great. I'd like to add on to that. Um, I do really enjoy our space over there. It is separated, but it's just a quick walk away. And what's nice about it is that it's quiet over there. Sometimes veterans can get irritated by too many people in one area, like a cafeteria, or it's too loud and the chatter, and it's just a really nice, safe place to decompress, do your homework, print out things that you might need, and get ready to go to class and take and a nap. <laughs> and, and, and let's, you know, I, I think there's also an elephant in the room. Um, a lot of our veterans come back um, experiencing the remnants of PTSD, That's right? True. So having a space where individuals are there that understand what they're going through now or have gone through is so important. A place that they can call their, their own, a place that they can call home away from home is critical. So I'm a strong advocate of the VMC. And we do have a sign up on the wall that was taken from the Navy Historical Museum down in New Orleans. It says, what you, what you do here, what you say here, it stays here when you leave here. So, and that's been a really good model for us. Great. And Paige, you had something you were saying? I said you could take a nap, which <laughs> oh. I think Kevin has done on occasion. <laughs> um, I won't acknowledge that either way, so <laughs> let's continue to the next question, Renee. Okay, sure. Let's talk about benefits. What are some of the benefits in, in general that um, can apply towards students or students can get assistance with for getting uh, financial aid? So there's really two categories uh, that we talk about with benefits, and pages are one that she processes about 75% of our student benefits right now. So the first tier is going to be federal, and that's going to be our VA benefits, and those um, would be like the Montgomery GI Bill, then there's the post 9-11 GI Bill, and then we have a vocational uh, rehabilitation program, then we have a dependence educational uh, assistance DEA but a different DEA right so that's we have that one and that's a chapter 35 of the VA and there's also a reserve component for our National Guard and for our active reservists and they get what they call the Montgomery 1606 so we administer all of those we are subject to um, all the VA and federal guidelines for that as well as all the national audits that we go through and then we also have the state benefits and I'll let Paige kind of elaborate because we have three different tiers on the on the state um, state benefits um, for veterans include the Illinois Veterans Grant. So if you joined from the state of Illinois and you did one year of active duty and you came back to the state of Illinois after, it varies now that they're changing the guidelines a little bit, but you can qualify for the IVG, which would cover your tuition and fees at any public university. Um, the ING, which is similar for our guardsmen, it's called the Illinois National Guard Grant. And then we also have the Illinois MIA POW scholarship, which would be similar to the federal benefit, but it's a state benefit that could help cover some of their tuition and fees here. And the MIA POW goes towards dependents and spouse of disabled veterans. And then this, the state makes a determination on those, as well as the, uh, the VA makes a determination for the federal Chapter 35. And that's important to know that um, there are benefits out there for dependents and for spouses because a lot of times they don't know. Yeah, and with spouses, not only can they get a benefit from a disabled service member, um, but they also can get the post 9-11. So the military is allowed now where an active duty member can transfer to his children or to his spouse, and they can use that same benefit if the member wants to go and give it up and let his family use it. So, and we do have those every semester. We always have a couple of those on campus. That's great. I was just going to add, um, as a student, all of those terms are so overwhelming. And coming out of the military, you know, you only get a week-long intervention that tells you, this is what you're going to do when you get out. Try to remember everything, and good luck to you. These here are our experts, Paige and Kevin. They know what category do you fall into, what will I qualify for. They're the team that's here to help you. So it's really important that if you have questions, you come in and make those appointments, talk with them, get your questions answered. Okay. My next question is about the different organizations 
that we have here on campus that are for veterans. And I'd like to know if we have any student organizations for veterans or honor societies for veterans. So again, we have two student organizations. The first one is the SVA and uh, Paige and Alyssa just came back from a conference last weekend down in Illinois State. So I'll let them expand on what SVA is. Go ahead, President. <laughs> I am the president of GSU's chapter of SVA, Student Veterans of America. And what we do is we create funding opportunities for any veteran groups here at Governor State University. We try to do community outreach, but we're not limited to just student veterans. We are also very inclusive. We like to have dependents, family members, or even if you're just a supporter of the military, we'd love to have you join our organization. Yes, and I am uh, the chapter advisor, so I would be working with the students, and unfortunately, they do come and go. They move on, and I will still be here to help guide the new SBA members. And like Alyssa said, due to COVID, we haven't really been able to do outreach, um, but our plan is to get more veterans involved and really form a good chapter here at GSU. And to Paige's point, you know, students come and go. I, I always say, how dare them? They come here, come to school, they graduate, they're successful, and they move on, and they leave us. But that's great. We love seeing that. Every single year, we love seeing that. Um, the second group we have, so, well, let me, let me back up a little bit. So SVA, it, you can join that the day that you're admitted to the university, right? That's, that's impactful from day one. Um, our second student organization is an honors academic group, and that is the Salute National Honor Society, which is hosted by Colorado State. It was actually started, oh God, it's probably been 10, 12 years ago now with a Home Depot grant. And um, uh, we are a chapter here, and that's by invite. So you have to maintain an academic uh, standing as an undergrad at 3.0 or higher, and as a graduate student or doctoral student at 3.5. And then uh, what we do is we send out the invite at the end of each semester, and then you make a decision if you want to go ahead and engage and join in that club. And then we celebrate all of our salute recipients at our end of the year graduation uh, and courting ceremony. I'd also like to add, if there is a club or organization that you want to start for veterans, GSU is a place to do that as well. There are opportunities to do that. So you're not limited to only what is available, but you can also create your own. Okay, well, that was my final question for today. Does anyone on the panel have any final thoughts they'd like to add? Um, I'd just like to reiterate the importance of um, veterans knowing that there is a place for them, particularly here at Governor State University. So make sure you stop by. From a student perspective, um, just remember, others have been in your shoes. We're here to help. The transition is scary, but we're here to make it as easy and as fluid as possible. So come on out, ask your questions, just stop in for a visit, introduce yourself. Thank you, Renee, for having us. Um, I just wanted to say that I myself, as a veteran, when I was transitioning, went through the same sort of situation, becoming overwhelmed, not knowing who to go to to get my benefits sorted. So I definitely understand where our student veterans are coming from, and I am grateful to be able to help them in any way. Great. And I, I will say, it doesn't matter if you just separated last week, last year, 10 years ago, 20 years ago. Um, I can even remember when I came here as a student to finish up my degree, and I was 50 years old. And um, I didn't know what veterans did here on campus. And we were having a fair on the floor in the Hall of Governors, and I saw this booth that said veterans. And I said, what are you guys doing? And they said, well, we're having elections for our officers for SBA. I said, well, who's running for the Coast Guard? And they said, well, nobody. I'm like, okay. So I wrote my name down, and I got the only vote, and I became a member of the SBA chapter. And next thing you know, I was working in career services, and I was asked to do some work for the veterans. And then the next year, I'm asked to take over the veterans program. So you never know what opportunity lays in front of you once you step up to the plate and you engage at whatever level, at whatever time in your life, um, it, it, it will make a difference for you. And I think um, it's also important to remind our student veterans that no question is too big or too small. That's We're very good here point. to support you. Okay, my story, I came to Governor State University a long time ago. I'll leave it there. 
and um, it was in between different tours of when I was going out. I had no idea that we had a veterans program. So I took my daughter one year to her community college um, for some testing, and they had a veterans program. So I just kind of knocked on the door, came in, introduced myself, and said, hi, and you know, I was trying to find out what you do, and they explained what they do, and I said, oh, it would be great if we had one at my school. He said, well, where do you go? And I told him, Governor State. He said, you do. <laughs> and so that is why I felt that it was so important that we have this type of a rap session so that we could get the word out, not that we just, we, we have one, but these are some of the things that we do. Why it's so important for you to get connected to it. You don't have to come by and say hi every day, but come in at least once. Thank you so much for sharing this time with us. So we're going to sign off now from VQ, Veterans Voices and Vibes. <laughs>